G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel. Hey, if it's your first time here, share, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Now today's a different video. Uh, firstly, I want to thank a John Fowler for having this photo available in Up Unsplash there in the free website. And I'm going to show you how to use the brushes I use. It's a little bit different to what I've seen when I was learning. Uh, people are probably changing and adapt by now, but I want to show you exactly how to do it, okay? And we've got a beautiful painting to work that out. The sizes were on the canvas there earlier, and also the colors I'm gonna use will be going up the screen as well. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into this video. Now getting to know these brushes, I've got the yellow handle one. I call it a putter on a brush because it puts the paint on. You've seen me in previous videos use that fellow. And I've got a two inch and a one and a half inch. Uh, so, and this is what we're going to use to blend and use whatever brush you're going to use to do your actual painting. But this puts the beginning on and that blends your skies, so to speak. So up here, I've got my foreground marked in and this is going to have probably a two-tone sky blended into the painting with the moon up here, okay? Just something very different. And now I want to, what I do is I get some craft paint, okay? And if I'm doing a lot of blending, I'm gonna add some retarder with this. That'll keep this wet longer. So down there is my craft paint. I want to virtually prime in the sky area. Now this retarder, I use the clear one that looks like baby oil, but it's not baby oil. Um, I'll put some of that with the paint, just a bit there. I reckon that's enough, considering what today's climate is. And then I'll just simply get the putter on a brush and I'll push it into the retarder and start mixing that craft paint. Well, it's, I call it craft paint, but it's a soft bodied acrylic white paint. Uh, it's not gesso, it's just a soft body student paint, poster paint, craft paint. I just call it craft white. Okay, so I've got that mixed. Now, because that is mixed with the retarder, it's going to stay wet a lot longer, which will give you a good window to blend in any clouds, sky colours or whatever. So I'm going to pretty much, where's my sky? Down to about here, the foreground. So I want to pretty much get all that mapped on so remember i said it's a putter on a brush see how i put that on it didn't muck around did it that is on done now i go to the tip of the brush this is how i use the putter on a brush you got paint here i've got nothing there i'm putting it on with this part of the brush see there's there's paint there i can push it all over my canvas whatever i'm painting on you can use this to gesso prime anything and it doesn't matter with all these scratch marks and all that you don't worry about that because what the magic i find with this brush does you come to the tip of the bristles and then you just start stroking it left and right like a pure gentleman or a lovely lady and you've got a nice even thin film of wet retarded paint ready to paint a beautiful blended colored sky on Okay, I've cleaned me putter on a brush. I've got some red violet there, okay? That's gonna be the top half of the sky. So now, this doesn't have retarder in it. All that paint up there on the canvas already has it in it. I don't need to keep adding it to every paint. So I'm gonna get this now. And the way I load me putter on a brush, see how I've chiseled it onto the edge there? It's not quite even, but as I'm doing that, I pretty much even it up. Okay, so it's even across there, and I'm, then I turn around and do the other side, and I might push it into the bristles there, in. That's is how I'm using these brushes, okay? And I know I've got enough paint to paint the top half of that sky with this red violet. So I'll, and there's ways, sometimes I'm going this way, sideways, or that way. I'll start sideways, why? Because I know I can get the color concentrated right in that area. See, it's concentrated right there, all the way across the canvas. Don't go here and here and here. I'm going all the way across the canvas. And now I can turn the brush sideways to fan it away, to, to spread it out. So I've got it there, concentrated. Now I'm slowly 
turning the brush sideways. I only want to go about halfway. Where's my sky? From here to there. Now I can crisscross this, get all the colour over there. So far everything's done with this putter on a brush. I call it a putter on a brush because it puts it on. It's not the real name for it, it's just a brush, a varnish brush, whatever. Okay, we've got that there. Can let it fade. Now I'm using the tip of the brush and that's what's doing this here. That's what's doing that, the tip of the brush. Not that part of the brush, because see what will happen? So that's why I wanted to make this video and show you how I use these brushes. So I've got to get rid of that now. And now I'm going to stroke all that like a pure gentleman. Just a nice even film of that red violet in the sky. Just like that. And now we've got happy days. Once you know how to do things, you can do it. Now, I've just cleaned the putter on a brush. The next colour I want to use for the sky is blue. So... I'm going to go for cobalt blue because it's that nice, sweet looking blue. And once again, I'm going to load up my putter on a brush like I just showed you with the red violet. Okay. See, in general, you might see me just doing this, but I've showed you with the red violet, I'm pulling it and pushing it in. You don't want to just grab it and blom it on any old way and hope for the best. When you know what you're doing, you can do it. Now we want to get the blue half of the sky done so we'll i'm just going sideways with the brush just to get that all into the sky there coming to the tip so i can control where i'm pushing it i don't want it in a flat line it's going to be scattered now i'm crisscrossing that into there i'll pick up a bit more blue because i want it a little bit more there we go vibrant than that and i want to get some more blue up here. So what I do, I'm stamping it on where I roughly want it, something like that. Stamping it there, stamping it there. And we'll stamp some darker elements right down here. I want it a lot darker where, here we go, darker there. I'll get rid of that white there, there we go. Okay. Now I want this blue soft up the top there. So now I'm gonna pick up one of these blending brushes. Whatever size suits you, everyone has different habits and styles and ways of doing things. And you're constantly um, wiping away the buildup that comes on your brush. So now I wanna dab. See how I'm dabbing? And manipulating and pulling. Now my aim here is to see there, I've ironed out all brush strokes. Look what's on the brush. You've got to constantly wipe it. And then I want to get this transition where it's to the red violet and some bits of it are going to be blended into the red violet. See like that, that bit there. So I'll quickly get all this done so you'll know what I'm doing. Blending away. And this is going to have some white clouds in it as well, so this is all the background for the foreground. Some of this, I want to blend some of that into there, just this soft bit there. I mainly want this bit hard, but this edge bit can be soft. And this is a simple, lovely painting to do. If you're watching it for the first time and you feel confused, don't worry, that's normal, that's natural. You're watching something, a demonstration for the first time, you get confused, just sit back, absorb it, and watch the darn thing, whatever you're watching. And watch the whole lot through and through. Then you're in your mind's accept of what you're going to start taking on board. And then you can start doing the rest of it and knowing what to do to get set up. Now I've got some titanium white here and I want to put on some clouds, some subtle clouds at the top and down the bottom. And I want to come in here, stamp on where I want my cloud. I want it something like that. Pick up a bit more. First I'll blend that down. So I'm grabbing my blending brush. Same again. Finding where the cloud is, working out what's happening with the paint and the brush. Pull it, blend it the way you want it, your painting to be. 
I'm doing what I'm wanting it to do, okay? This is just a bit of in-between stuff, you'll see. Okay, we've got that done. That was easy, wasn't it? Now I'm picking up some more titanium white, not the craft white, the titanium white, okay? And now I wanna get some more of this. I don't wanna brush it into it because it can dig right through all that wet paint. I'm always stamping it on, okay? Now I wanna create, I'm pushing that one back so you'll see once it's painted, and I want to create just something here and then loosely feathering out into some whitewash over there and do the same again. I'm dabbing on and off, twisting and pulling. I want the bottom of this really washed into the blue. There we go. Some bits of the top can be washed a little bit, but not too much. Wipe your brush. See what I'm doing? I'm wiping it because there's a lot of build up on that brush. And this is how I use these brushes all the time when you see me doing the skies. And if you think, oh wow, I like the way those skies are turning out, grab yourself some brushes like this and practice with them. Or if you can't find any, message me and I'll send you some. All right, now I wanna put the main cloud down here. So I'm using the same brush, but I have washed it out because when I was picking up this paint and putting those first clouds on, it was slowly getting blue into it. So look at what you're doing and work out, okay, I've got to clean that a bit so I don't get contamination everywhere. So my foreground's gonna be here. I want this nice and heavy coming from about, just come straight off the painting and I want it pillowing up here somewhere, giving it body. Now what I find with clouds, see the body you're giving it? Here, I'll do another thick bit here. The body has its main top, but it's got thickness within the body. Now see that body, how it's got blue in the middle of it and it's solid here and there? That makes up for all the turmoil, the luster, and the absolute bullshit you see in clouds. Now for those people the first time here that just heard me say bullshit, what I mean by that is it's a bigger and better way of saying wow. Because when someone looks at your work, and they see that bullshit going on, they look at it and go, bullshit, did you do that? Do you know what I mean? Now, we're gonna blend that cloud. Look at it, it looks all dotty and brushy and it looks like snot, doesn't it? But, you know how to use these brushes. See, there's a lot of paint here I can see. I don't wanna get that and blend the living buggery out of it and put it over here and turn it into just smear. I wanna, I'm dabbing, dancing, dabbing. Now already I've got quite a lot of paint on that brush so that's why I say wipe it and I'm also wanting to create the bottom glaring down into that blue like that. See what I'm doing? So we've got this, see too much paint, look I'll wipe the brush sometimes they stick out like an idiot just pull them back. Now we get that nice and washed into the blue there. That's what I'm looking for all the way along this cloud. Now, we'll twist this. Now see that turmoil? Oh, not, I call it turmoil. We're creating turmoil. You, oh, it's turmoiling, it's twisting, it's dancing. You're not brushing for fingerprints, okay? Wipe it, because it's just dragging paint everywhere. Art isn't a speed thing. It's take your time, understand the science of things, and you'll get there. And sometimes, I'm going all the way along now, sometimes you might feel it's the one flavour all the way along, we've got a bit of luster here, that doesn't matter. We can come back, and that's what I call the yumminess. We stamp our yumminess on there and make some beautiful yumminess. I want this right down there. And all the way over to here. So if anything, I'm keeping the top quite hard and the bottom washed down the lower half of the sky colour there. Wipe that because it's picking up too much paint and your brush is dry. See I can blend that down to a nice wash colour there. A massive big hair there. I was too vigorous with the brush. Uh, where's my knife? Get that off there. Get off there you mongrel. There we go. Got him. That's alright. It's still wet. I'll blend all that back. Fix the tops up, tickle the tops I call it. Now we're ready to put some dimension in there. So I've cleaned the fan brush, I've reloaded it, 
And I don't want to go crazy. I just want to sort of get a bit of, so it's not, see all this wash color here? I want to kind of break that up. So I can probably come from here and maybe something there. This is just what I call yumminess. Boom, something there. And from the top into it there. And this just adds a little bit more that the cloud's coming out. It's just not flat. And with this, you simply sit that down. I'm using the very corner of this brush here now. See where I'm going here? And wiping it as well. You're sitting that down, but leaving the luster there. If you get dots and pattern spots, try and get rid of those. And see how that's added a bit more there. I'll, I'll, dot, I'll stamp that bit there. Then I'll, I'll, turmoil is when I'm moving it like this. So I'm stamping it there and adding a bit of turmoil here. Get rid of that stampy look. There's a bit more here. And you'll see, sometimes when you're doing this, you see patterns happening. And if they're looking great, bloody leave them. Here we go, we'll stamp there. And you can just practice this. Get a cereal packet, turn it inside out, and practice subjects on there, whether it's trees, clouds, water, whatever. And we've just added the yumminess to there, which is, if anything, gave in that cloud now a bit more fluffy dimension coming at you. All right? I might just, for the video's sake, see here, I might just put the from the blue and a little bit up here, not too much, I'm not putting a thick glunk there. I'm just gonna see if this is still wet. Hopefully that red gold, I mean that red violet's still wet. So I'll come from the blue, get up to there. I'm in the blue color still. Drag it, whatever you're doing. Stop, wipe your brush. And then go to the top half. Let's see if it's gonna blend into that top half or did it dry too much? Uh, it's not too bad. This is, was just a, something I wanted to see. I could have left it, but now I'm twisting the buggery out of it because it's dried a bit. I'm just trying to get some flavor there in the sky like that. See what that just little bit there did? Now we're gonna put our moon here. Okay, I've dried it around here because I want to cover up just this top blue bit and sink me moon in. Now to paint that painting so far as it is, I've just used these two brushes and the one fan. So you don't need a lot of intricate brushes as you go. You'll learn what can work for you. And um, maybe you do want a lot of intricate brushes or you need them, but as you do certain paintings, you'll realize you only need simple things as well. I want to mix up the moon color now. So instead of it just being white, I've got some yellow ochre here and I want the, the slightest bit of yellow ochre into me white. So I'm just going to grab a simple fan brush and mix up some, well, I've got white there and I'll have some of this mixed in it as well. So I've got two colors. So that's the color I want. Well, that's too much. Now, when you're mixing a light and dark color, I found in my art journey, it pays to grab the lighter color into a pile and then slowly add the darker color. Because if I put all of that into that, I'm gonna be adding so much white to bring it back. Now I'm gonna show you the picture I uploaded from Unsplash from John Fowler just so you get an idea where I'm going. Okay, I've masked that up where I'm gonna stamp in me moon behind the blue. I've got myself a pouncer. Over here I call them pouncers, stipplers, a stamper. Get these from craft shops or hobby shops, okay? Or make one up out of some foam. And to get mine loaded up, ready to go, I normally give it a squirt of water, just like that. Pretty easy one, eh? and now it's gonna absorb paint a lot easier. Now I wanna, I'll, I'll start with this color here as the base, and I'll get that onto the canvas. Now I want my moon about, let's squash that down a bit so it's not gonna hinder. I want my moon about 
this high, just tuck them behind there. So this is that dirty yellow ochre colour. Twist it so it's getting onto the canvas there. Now, by looking at it, I can see it needs more paint. Just load up the pouncer again. There we go. Because in the picture, I can see this slight colour under there, white. There we go. Boom. Now, you can either paint the white on top of that or use your pouncer. I'm going to use my pouncer, so what I'm going to do, I'll just show you here. I'm going to leave bits on here that I want to stay that colour within the moon. So what I want to do is pretty much all around the edge, I'll paint some white on here. And then I'm going to get some more paint. Just lace this where I feel I want the craters, the big dark spots, leaving them not painted in the white. Uh, something like this. Now I haven't tried this, but that's why I say practice everything. If you practice things and you're doing this, you'll have confidence knowing that it's going to work. So what I'm showing you here, if you haven't done this before, grab yourself a cereal box, turn it inside out, and paint this moon on that cereal box the way I've showed you in this video. And then hopefully I can just, there's me round mark. I want to, now if this doesn't work, I know I can always pick up the brush and detail it in. So now I've, I'm, I've made contact. I'm just pulsing it onto there. I'm going to pull it off. Not bad, but it's a bit bleh, right in the face. So I will grab that little brush, this one here. I'm going to wipe the living buggery out of it. So I'll just wash all that paint off it so it'll be dry. And dry it, I mean. And then we'll get this. Where are we? I'll lean on my mouse stick, Malcolm, and I'm going to just push this to the edge, just like so. Now, I've got a lot on my brush, so I've got to constantly keep wiping it, otherwise it's going to transfer everywhere too much. I won't be able to control the transferring of this white. So we'll get that around there. Wipe the build up off the brush in here. And I can always add more white onto this. I've got to constantly wipe it because this white paint that I used, I'm using Atelier paint, but I, I grabbed the big bottle of the Flow one, which is a softer body than I normally use. So it's you can see here the consistency of it is very diluted. Um, first time I'm using it, I wanted to use it just to see how it's going to work, and I'm quite happy with it. I just got to make sure I'm wiping the build up. So I'm pretty much dabbing the big wet parts of that white out. Now see where the white is meeting the yellow ochre? Grab your brush, you've wiped all the paint off, and just smear that. Distort that transition line so it's not a hard line. It's all about art. You can do it. See I'm smearing that? I do need a little bit here, a bit whiter. There we go. And if you can get the edges nice and sharp, it'll make for a good piece as well. Now I've got a little bit of yellow oxide with a bit of white, and I'm just putting back in there just to change up. I'm using this little flat. There we go. So it's up to you how you create your moon. And now I'll get the titanium white and crisp up where I need it to be white. So clean the same brush, picked up the titanium white out of the tube this time, not that thinner one. I want to get the edge stamped on and just pretty much manipulate this throughout the moon body. Now if it's, see here I'll show you, if it's not showing the white too much, like here, you probably just need to dry it a bit. But I'm just going to persevere with this. There we go, we've got bits of crater marks there. We've got some nice vibrant white around the sort of edge here and hopefully this will sit behind that blue cloud. 
So let's pull that tape off. Pull this off nice and gingerly. Oh, that's worked out quite nice. Now you can see it's not just a white glaring in your face moon. We've got that tempo going on, which is, this is the picture I got off Upsplash, Unsplash, and you can see it there, okay? Now I wanna put this foreground in and these grass trees. I've dried this so it's not gonna wash into me white and I'm gonna use me putter on a brush and we'll get this lacing up there with some titanium white. This is that flow consistent titanium white. And I wanna kiss this against the sky nice and sharp. So we'll come from about here. Now I'm gonna use the edge of this brush because I can cut it in with a straight line, see there? It's breaking up, stop, reload your brush. Come back there, get that nice and sharp. And now I wanna come up the painting as well, up here. There we go. I'm leaving the white, the faded blue, and then the hard blue against the here. Now I'll just simply brush this in, giving it nice brush strokes. There's no retarder in this either. This is just straight titanium white. Now I can give that a little bit of a dry, just to, so I can give it another coat. So I've dried it a little bit, it's still wet, but I just wanted it, I didn't want it soaking wet. And I want to create some shadow areas as well. So I've just got some burnt sienna and I want to grab some of this and put into this pile of white here. And I want to create some darker, you know, lays within the ground. Looks like a skin color that. It's not too bad, is it? Now looking there, we've got some mounds, so I want to get some mounds here. There, I've got like three of them there. There, pick it up. That's why I dried it a bit. And just, put your shadowy bits in. Like so, we'll put some, let's say here. What we can do, because it's still a bit wet, we're stamping it. Stamping it. Because we're gonna come back with the white to sh give this its proper shapes, okay? Uh, we can have some stuff scattered over here. Just making different lays of the land. Maybe all the way up here, boom, look at that, so easy. Now I want to grab some of the burnt umber, very on the tip of this flat brush, just on the tip. Because we want to make some, see like there, see how little went on there? Very little, but that's how you want it. You don't want it a big massive blob. We're going to have some this is just the, the darker bits I can see within the picture. There's quite a few bits of darker bits of twigs and sand and dirt. Now I'm not sure in this picture if it's snow or white salty sand. I don't really know. Bits of it up there somewhere. I'm not thinking and watching the reference picture backwards and forwards and confusing myself. I'm just getting ideas from that reference picture and making mine up the way I want it to be. And you can see just how this has came into play with the actual painting. Get some around there somewhere. How's that going? There, yeah, that'll do. That white should have been tainted a bit, but I did it just pure white. But make sure your white is not pure white. Just taint it down a bit with a little bit of the yellow ochre or the burnt sienna. Now I'm just grabbing a softer, I've just got a filbert brush here, flat flat cat tongue filbert and these bits here looking at the reference I want to sort of get these the way it needs to look and this one's kind of dancing in front of there and we're going to set things back just looking at the reference might have a bit of light coming there 
see if it was tainted it'll sit back a lot better and that's pretty much it can probably cut that back if I want all right I've got another flat brush appropriate size for me grass trees I'm going to probably just do one in this off center and one off to the side so I've just got some black here to just to map in the trunks of these grass trees so I'll get one sitting so I can always use the white to sit it back down so I want it about there get the paint again and I want to bring one up here and taper it in as you come to the top about that high will do if anything you're making it like a bullet shape these grass trees are quite native in my state Western Australia look them up and this one here is coming up I'm just making it a simple bullet shape I've got one in my front garden every time you see the picture of my house in the videos if you looked I don't know if it's in the shot or not but if you look to the far right near the fence you'll see one growing in my front garden there these ones are smaller ones they're just grass but this is the actual grass tree here okay that black I'll grab some white pull it over here and I want to get a grey I was going to grab my tube of grey but I thought I might as well use what's on my palette here Grab a Malcolm once again and pretty much I want to come from about here and make lots of lines. I've got to try and keep the brush chiseled. I want a dark area here the way it is in the picture so I'll sort of come down like that and it's just off the ground there we're making long scratchy find your vibe come alive with your art there we go look at that you want the black in the middle of it still it'll make sense when get it up to about the top there not quite the top now I've got yellow ochre but I don't want straight yellow ochre I want some white with it just to kill it down a bit get that flavor that I'm looking for and I want some lighter values of this and darker values of this so I'm, I'm mixing a lighter value over here just to the right of that pile and I'll, I'll put the darker value on first so I'll just simply wipe that brush I'm not washing it just wipe pulling the paint out and we'll get some of this and from the top here now you want to scratch this down like so over the gray load your brush again so you can get some controlled sharp grassy brush strokes if you've got a better brush to get your nice liney grass use that by all means I hope this turns in I hope it looks like a grass tree when we're finished I've never done one of these before Now we'll grab the lighter colour that we mixed as well. I'm picking up the highlighted colour pile that I mixed when I mixed that up. And just, you know, bits here. See the highlighted colour? It just adds more detail to your painting. You're leaving the dark value there. There, that's good. Now while that's drying, I've got some perylene green here and I want to mix some of that just with some sap green so I can get a really darker value of sap green I want to put the darker green for the other side while that other grass trees drying so for this bit on this side here it's just going to be the grass growing out so pretty much like this and I want to make so we're coming from here and we're just making like the tops of the grass trees out here nice and sharp and grassy and when we highlight this it'll put what's behind and what's in front in its order okay so just get your darks on put what's in front with the highlights so that's all that's over here
darken that up there. Also, I'll use that colour for the grass trees tops here. So they're pretty much growing up. Come from the middle and spade out. I remember when I first moved to Western Australia and I saw these grass trees here, I was quite fascinated with them as a little boy. But I'm tearing the edge up as it meets the sky. I want it dark down here. And then later on, once we're done, we can get this colour and put some little detail bits here and there as well. Now I've got the yellow ochre. Let's get rid of that black brush. And I'm mixing it with the sap green, okay, just to get that brown grass dead look. Your greens need this in there, I feel. You look at your shrubs and trees on the side of the road when you're drawing, squint your eyes and you see this colour within the greens. And this just adds the, probably the real flavour of green within your trees. I'm just getting this within there, here and there, not all over the place, and then I'll gently highlight them. There we go. How are we? There we go there. Just the minutest flavour. I've dried everything. I've grabbed the script liner and the black because they do, some of them do have a bit of a stem. How's the stem look? Oh, pretty much just like that. So you want these nice and sharp. So I'm twisting the brush about there. And what I'll just do to make it pleasing is put some gollops, dollops, blobs there like that, like I can see within the, the photo coming off it like that and he's coming from within the tree there I'm doing this first because the highlights need to sink this back so that's why I'm putting these in now nice and sharp and this on there Now we'll simply highlight the green there to finish it off. And I've just got like the green. We'll grab some yellow and just simply get a yellow green going, get a bit of water within it. And we'll just subtly highlight those grasses. And this is where you can put ones behind and in front of each other. So I'll pretty much hit the tops come down hit the tops there there we go now i want to put this one in front of it pick up some more and in all in all i hope it i'm going to look in my monitor in a minute I hope it looks grassy greeny. It's not loud and bright and thick and cartoony. Where I put that dead colour, I just want to sort of come within that and caress. Nice and thin though. <sighs> Okay, I'll just sign this and then we'll whack a frame on it and see how she looks. I want to thank all my patrons. They support my content every month. Much appreciated. Check out the links in the description below. I have about 12 there. I have over 400 videos in my channel here, different subjects to learn to paint for beginners. Oh, get that there like that.
Okay, I've whacked that frame on there. Yeah, that don't look too shabby, does it? We've got some grass trees pretty much high up. There's some altitude there looking down at the sky and the red violet with the moon setting. And I know you can do it. Well, what a lot of fun that was. Something different, subtle, but effective. I like it. I hope you like it. And if you do like it, give me the thumbs up, share, like, and subscribe. And be sure to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, <laughs> and good on you.